It's a new year in the Peoria Unified School District and we're bringing you a brand new show, Peoria Connection, a partnership between the Peoria Unified School District and the city of Peoria. It's your source for all that's going on across our schools. On today's show, we'll introduce you to our new deputy superintendent, Dr. Jason Reynolds. We'll also preview a local cafeteria with some new menu items being served to our students. And finally, we'll get a preview of our fall athletic lineup. All that and more after this. for our first guest on Peoria Connection. He is the new deputy superintendent for the Peoria Unified School District, only been here with us for about eight weeks now. I'm so excited to introduce Dr. Jason Reynolds. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. We are so glad to have you. We've been here just such a short time already, but I know you're getting out and about around our schools. What has it been like so far? Well, it's absolutely amazing. You know, I've had an opportunity to meet some pretty incredible people here in Peoria uh, Unified School District. They have been warm and welcoming. Uh, I've had an opportunity to get out to some schools and some of other facilities. Uh, and everyone is so proud of the work that they do and the schools uh, that they have created. And they just want to show them off. Uh, and that has been a lot of fun. Well, I, I know they want to show you all the great things happening. It's always so interesting to me, too, how different each school is and you have this fresh perspective coming in and seeing each of them. And I know they're probably showing you uh, all the different things that make their campus unique. What really maybe stands out to you so far about what it is that you've seen here in Peoria? Well, the, the, um, the way that the teachers uh, love their students uh, is extraordinary. On every single campus that I've been on, you can just feel it when you walk into classrooms, when you walk into cafeterias, when you walk around campus. The way that the administrators embrace their role in uh, supporting and guiding uh, their entire communities to make sure that our students are having the, the very best uh, uh, experience that they can have, it's, it's extraordinary. Well, and you know what I've found to be true, that that is the case no matter who it is that comes onto one of our campuses. So it's not just because you're the deputy superintendent that they're doing this, but they really uh, have that same level of excellence and, and they show that to everyone that comes on. But what exactly does a deputy superintendent do anyway? That's kind of a, a, a big title. What is your role or what does that entail, what you do for our district? Well, as you said, I've been here just about eight <laughs> weeks, so I'm still trying to figure that sure. out. Sure. Uh, but uh, I think from a, a, you know, kind of a global perspective, it's my responsibility as the deputy to work with our superintendent, our governing board, uh, to work with our administrators, teachers, all the stakeholders, including the students, to uh, make sure that we're providing uh, that outstanding uh, educational experience for every one of our students, uh, whether that's academically in the classroom and making sure that our students are achieving their growth uh, every single year and beyond, or whether uh, we're providing some um, outstanding experiences outside the classroom um, and uh, in our extracurricular co-curricular activities. And I know you are not new to education, even though you're new to us. Talk a little bit, if you could, about your background and, and really what has led you to Peoria. Well, I came to Arizona back in 1993, where I was an English teacher down in Yuma, Arizona at Cibola High School, which is still, still near and dear to my heart. Uh, it was a wonderful way to start my career. Uh, that that, that uh, community um, of Yuma uh, has a very similar feel to uh, the community here, uh, where they take great, great pride in what they do and how they educate their children. So from Yuma, I moved to the Paradise Valley Unified School District, where I was an English teacher, uh, a dean of students, an assistant principal, worked my way through to be principal at Pinnacle High School, and then director of curriculum instruction and assistant superintendent um, of over secondary schools most recently. And that's what brought me here to Peoria. Well, I know you've had uh, quite the career, but we're just so thrilled that you have come here to us. Uh, I want to ask you as well, as you're kind of going out and about and, and you're seeing things with this fresh perspective and 
many, many points of pride, as you mentioned, but what do you see maybe as opportunities or, or things that we can expect as we look to what's next for Peoria? Well, we have a really good uh, problem to solve uh, here in Peoria, and that is the fact that there are so many people from uh, around the country, from around the state, from around the valley who want to live in Peoria. And so we're seeing uh, some pretty significant growth in this area. And so there are a lot of challenges that come with that. And uh, it's, uh, you know, as the deputy superintendent, um, it's important to work with our community, to work with uh, citizens uh, from both Glendale and Peoria to try to tackle some of those concerns and make sure that uh, we're able to provide wonderful facilities that we're able to provide um, uh, an attractive place for our teachers and administrators to want mm -hmm. to be, and most importantly, the very best learning opportunities for students. Wow, we look forward to working right alongside you through all that, and uh, I think the future is bright for us. We're just so glad to have you. Now, I can't let you leave today without maybe just letting our community get to know you a little bit more. So I've got kind of a lightning round for uh -oh. you, if All we right. could. Uh, so if you'll humor me here for just a second, I'm going to put you on the spot okay. just a little bit with some of these questions and maybe just kind of first thing that comes to mind. Okay. okay? When I ask you these, and just right off the top of your head and we'll kind of rapid fire go through uh, really quickly here. Can we maybe just put like one minute on the clock and see if we can get through these? How about that? Let's see it. Okay, we'll put one minute on the clock and texting or talking? Texting. Invisibility or super strength? Oh, super strength. Dawn or dusk? Dawn, definitely. Sourdough or wheat? Sourdough. Cake or pie? Pie. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Climb a mountain or jump out of a plane? Climb a mountain every day of the week. Summer or winter? In Arizona, winter. Good choice. <laughs> Hotel or camping? Camping. Movies or books? Books. Okay, I think we're just about out of time there, but thank you for letting uh, me kind of get through there. And I know thank our you. community certainly likes to learn a little bit more about you. So um, just the warmest welcome from everyone here in the Peoria Unified School District. We're so glad to have you. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much thank, for having me. Thank you for joining me.
like fall out just yet. The fall weather will be here soon. And that means one thing, it's football season. We have many athletic events kicking off all around the Peoria Unified School District, and we're really excited to be broadcasting many of them new this year through our partnership with the City of Peoria. You can catch many of those broadcasts on Channel 11, and we'll kick it off September 6th with the rivalry between Liberty and Sunrise Mountain. You know, we got 40 plus seniors and uh, you know, when you have that type of experience back, it's always exciting to see that leadership, that growth, that maturity, you know, and what that can do on the football field for us. You know, we're, we're really trying to get in that open eight. You know, that's a new deal in the state of Arizona. And uh, you know, we feel like we got a team that has a shot in competing in that. Uh, just the opportunity to compete with these young guys. We've got kind of a young team. A lot of juniors are starting. New quarterback this year. We had a, a Keegan Freed from the last two years. Um, so we're just looking, you know, we're excited for both of those aspects of the game and see how they turn out. Well, we have a great deal coming back on offense. We've got our quarterback coming back. We've got three running backs. We've got four receivers. We've got three of the five offensive linemen coming back. So that, that's a real strength for us and our defense is improving daily. Um, you go up in front of the team and you know you explain why you want to be captain and why you think you can lead the team and uh, they picked me out of ten other guys. There's seven of us. The camaraderie and the bond you build between the coaches and players and stuff. He's never, ever since I was a little freshman, he's always treated me the exact same. JV, varsity, it's always been the same relationship. Uh, I'm looking forward to the, the changes that we can hopefully see from last season. We had a rough season last year. Uh, we got a lot of new kids that are juniors now that are showing a lot of leadership. Uh, a lot of the seniors this year didn't really like how they were led last year and uh, want to do things differently. So I'm excited to see just internally how we handle things differently and bounce back from the rough year that we had. It's football season. I mean, what's not to be excited about? I think that's the biggest thing. These guys, you know, they're, they're all summer, they're in the weight room during the school year, so, I mean, this is football season, so everything's exciting about football season. Get the ball! Get the ball! Also, we'll be excited to bring you many opportunities to watch our volleyball games and more athletic events as they're happening all around the Peoria Unified School District. You can find all that and more on our website, peoriaunified.org slash Peoria Connection. Well, if you haven't found yourself in your local school cafeteria in a while, you certainly would be impressed if you stepped in today. Food now is just so different than what you may remember when you were younger. An array of options, and we are bringing some of them to you today. I am joined by Angela from our Food and Nutrition Department. Thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you for having me. And you have brought us quite the spread, and I know we're going to talk through some of the items that you brought for us and preview some of the things that are new this year. But before we do that, can tell me just a little bit about what it is that we serve our kids and kind of um, what goes into that. I know we follow some set guidelines that we're required to follow, so can you talk a little bit about that? So we're part of the school breakfast program and the national school lunch program headed by the USDA. So we have certain regulations where we're serving more whole grains, fruits, vegetables. Our foods have to be low in saturated fat, low in sodium, and contain no trans fat. So they're actually really healthy. Well, that's interesting because I have little ones of my own and finding foods that they like is so challenging, but I know you managed to pull it off. So how is it that you're able to come up with so many creative options that kids actually like? You know, we do some food testing with them. So we do some taste testing and we just offer options. Food exposure is just a big portion of it. So we just try to offer a variety, make sure there's color on their plate and, and letting them know that they have two to three options at least. Well, that's great. I know you get the feedback from them and they, and you also monitor. So uh, sometimes sales will show what it is that they really like and they yes. give you that feedback. What does it cost these days for a student to go through the lunch line and, and make their choices at the elementary and high school level? So at lunch for the elementary, it's only $2.50. Very reasonable. Then, yes, extremely reasonable. And at the high schools, it's two seventy-five. 
and from that cost they pay, they get a variety of choices or is it just a set menu item every day? So the elementaries typically have about two to three entree options a day for lunch and that includes hot and cold. High schools typically average at least 12 different options wow. for lunch a day, hot and cold. Uh, elementaries and high school, at least one vegetarian option is served daily. Well, that's important. I do want to talk a little bit about that. So I would imagine we're seeing more and more families who are becoming conscious about uh, the different types of foods out there and what's healthy and, and what's not. Are you seeing more requests uh, from our families for some specialty things like maybe vegetarian and vegan? And do we accommodate that? Yeah, so on our menus, we already make it pretty easy to read. We either have a green leaf or a green letter V mm -hmm. to mark that those are vegetarian. And that means that the only animal products or only animal byproducts would be like milk, uh, egg, cheese, or honey in there. So it makes it really easy for our vegetarian families. At the high school, our salad station is actually a, a great option for people who are following a, a vegan lifestyle. Wow, so really accommodating all of them. I do want to turn to some of the items that we have here that you have brought uh, to kind of highlight. Can you kind of maybe walk me through what we've got here, maybe starting over here, uh, and tell us a little bit about what we're looking at. So this is a breakfast entree um, that we have for our high schools and our elementaries. So this is a breakfast pretzel sandwich and it's made with whole grains. So it has more fiber to mm. offer the kiddos and it has a slice of cheese. It has some ham and egg on there. And then the kids get the option of juice or milk. They can take both. And then there's fresh fruit. Um, sometimes uh, frozen fruit on the line, but options for them to choose on bre at breakfast. Well, and speaking of fruit, I know you've had some really interesting fruits on the menu and, and maybe even be exposing kids to things they've never had the opportunity to try. Um, I, I've seen things like kiwi and mm -hmm. uh, things that probably kids find a little bit interesting. What's been the feedback on those? Uh, I think kids get really excited. One of our high schools last year was able to bring in blood oranges. Mm. And so I think uh, the curious kids might only put one slice on their tray, but that's a, hey, that's a win for us. It is, uh, being exposed to many things. Yeah. Now this one really caught my eye because it's become kind of a popular um, popular dish, I think, all around. We've seen many uh, breakfast places starting to serve chicken and waffles. Is that what I'm seeing here? Yes, yes, that's our chicken and waffles. And the chicken is baked, uh, so not fried. We don't fry any of our foods here. Um, it's breaded in whole grains, and then the waffles are made with whole grains as well. So it's a it's our take, um, our school version take on some soul food. But still getting a side of syrup there. That's right. Okay, can't yeah. leave that out. Okay, no. well, let's move along down here, and um, I'm seeing some fresh salads. Yes, so this is our new salad station this year that's available to the high school students Monday through Thursday. And this should, is just an example of what they could pick. They have all these toppings to choose from wow. and they can kind of make it their own. They have salad dressings on the side to choose from and then it comes with the whole grain and of course the fruit and veggie bar so they can load up with some fruits or extra veggies that they wanted. And it looks like a variety of protein options for them. So not yeah. just one choice. Exactly. We have uh, edamame, we have beans on there for them, cheese, sunflower seeds, eggs, ham, chicken, turkey really have a lot. Definitely a lot of color. Not what probably many people are used to seeing from um, from their younger days in the cafeteria. Well, it all looks delicious and so I might be doing a little sampling <laughs> here. Uh, thank you so much for bringing these in and I know we look forward to featuring some more items here on our show. So thank you, Angela. Thank you, Danielle. Like most school districts across the valley, Peoria Unified receives funding for our people and programs from a maintenance and operations override. The current Maintenance and Operations Override, or MO, funds healthcare professionals, assistant principals on all campuses, maintains class sizes, and pays for programs such as arts, music, physical education, full day kindergarten, reading, gifted education, and athletics and extracurricular activities. Our governing board recently called for an election where we'll ask our voters to renew and increase our MO override. The increase would fund safety initiatives, like more counseling and intervention support service positions and additional staff compensation. In order to vote, you must be a registered voter in the state of Arizona. This election is a mail-in ballot only election, meaning you must drop your ballot in the mail by November 1st, rather than visiting your local polling place. To learn more, visit peoriaunified.org slash bonds and overrides. for joining us for Peoria Connection. Before we go, we'll leave you with images from the start of the 1920 school year. 